What is up everybody? It's Brett and this is a special conversational pace episode. We're out and about in beautiful Ashland, Oregon and today we are bringing you a first impressions video of the Adidas Terex Agravic Speed Ultra. That's definitely a mouthful so I'm just going to call it the Speed Ultra from uh, here on out but I just wanted to give a quick impressions video because I've gotten to do a little bit of running in the shoe and unfortunately Finn hasn't gotten a pair yet but this shoe I think is going to be special so there will definitely be a full length review video with the both of us as soon as that's available but for now I just wanted to give a few of my impressions after going for a few runs in the shoe. I've actually had the pair since November. I got it at the running event in Austin, Texas from the Adidas Terex booth. That was definitely a pleasant surprise. Um, I've gone eight runs in the shoes. I've got about 80 miles on them and one of them was actually a race. I do want to say though that even though I did get these shoes from Adidas Terex, I'm under no financial obligation to say whether I like the shoe or not. All opinions are my own and no one's going to get to preview or watch this footage before it gets published to YouTube. Um, let's just do a quick rundown of the stats. I did talk about them on my Adidas Terex preview video. I'll link to that in the show notes. But uh, officially coming in at $220 USD. My pair came in at 9.9 ounces or 282 grams. And it's a US size 10. The stack height is officially now 30 millimeters in the forefoot. 38 millimeters in the heel for an eight millimeter drop. We'll do a quick overview of the materials. The upper is a really simple uh, kind of engineered mesh upper that almost feels a little bit on the plasticky side. Definitely feels like a pretty classic Adidas race upper. Super simple. There's almost no additional foam or padding anywhere on the shoe. Uh, almost no padding around the ankle collar or the heel cup very uh, thin tongue as well. No stretch, uh, minimal overlays. You know, they definitely tried to keep it as light as possible. There's no plastic heel counter, but instead you sit really deep into the heel cup, uh, very much bucket seat style midsole foam. Speaking of the midsole, it is two big slabs of their Light Strike Pro foam. So that's the same foam that we see in the Audios Pro 3 marathon shoe. Allegedly this one's been tuned a little bit firmer for the trails. Um, I've never run in the Audios Pro 3 so I don't actually know how different they feel. In between the two layers of foam is their energy rods which for the this shoe they are not made of carbon and they are actually made of a TPE which is just plastic. They went for plastic instead of carbon because they kept breaking carbon in their testing and as I have said in many previous reviews that I didn't know if carbon was the best material for the trails. Adidas tends to think that might not be the case either. So they went for the material that they thought worked best, added just the right amount of stiffness, uh, also added just the right amount of flexibility and they didn't just opt into the you know, trendy buzzword material. So kudos to Adidas for picking the correct material on this one. The energy rods are uh, a slight oval or flatter design. And that was just so they would work better with the ground and be a little bit smoother underfoot. The outsole is Adidas classic continental rubber. We have a mixture of two and a half millimeter and three and a half millimeter lugs in the outsole so this is very much your you know dry conditions type shoe you know not not a lot of lug depth there but that's all right so what i'm going to do is go over a few of my initial impressions after some runs in the shoe as and then what we'll do is we'll go back to the studio and we'll actually answer a couple uh viewer questions because i put out uh, a little question box on my instagram story so I'll give a couple quick hits on what I thought of the shoe and then we'll answer a few questions back in the studio. Initial step in feel. I thought the shoe felt weird as hell as soon as I put it on. 
It is one of the most rockered shoes that I've ever worn, and that's because it was initially designed around being the perfect downhill shoe. So it not only has a very aggressive forefoot rocker, it also has a massive heel rocker, which is super interesting. Um, you know, when you're standing in the shoe, it almost feels like your heel's not touching the ground at all, which is a very unique feel. Um, something that definitely takes a little bit to get, a little while to get used to. We hit the end of the trail. So we're turning around, coming back. Uh, yeah, first shoe, first run in the shoe, I didn't actually like it at all. It felt like it very much was like throwing me on my toes and I wasn't letting my heel naturally hit the ground and it almost felt like my calves were burning in the shoe. And I think part of that was that their shoe actually does have a little bit of a break in period. And I almost had to like let my body figure out how to run in it. So it wasn't really like love at first sight for the shoe, which was kind of interesting and something that I think is important to know. But after about 30 miles, I would say like the new shoe stiffness started to wear out a bit and it started to feel a little bit more natural on my foot. I will say though that even still with this aggressive heel rocker and it not feeling like there's much under heel, when you're running flat, it almost feels similar like foot placement wise to as if you were running up a slight incline. And then when I'm running up steeper inclines, it actually feels steeper. Does it actually mean I'm running slower? No, I've checked and that's not the case. When I run downhill though, it actually feels incredible. Running down like a five to 8% grade, I've never felt more comfortable in a shoe ever. I've never felt more secure. I've never felt faster. The shoe was clearly meant to be bombing down hills, which is why I wore it for the Black Canyon 60K back in February. Um, we're gonna cut to my 60 second mid-race Black Canyon shoe review right now. We're doing 20 second conversational pace quick hitter shoe reviews from the race. I am wearing the Adidas Terex Speed Ultra. And this course right now is so muddy. Well, it's not muddy, it's frozen mud. It's ankle roll city. And so far, Tarek Speed Ultra, of all of the like quote unquote trail super shoes, this one is handling that terrain the best. Okay, and we're back. That ended up being the perfect shoe for that course. I think Black Canyon, like those deserty, slightly rocky, but still pretty fast courses are gonna be the ideal race courses for this kind of shoe. I think you could take it on even slightly more aggressive technical terrain. I found that from a stability standpoint, it was it was really great. The cushioning was definitely there. And the biggest thing that I was worried about was if I would have any calf problems and I did not. It actually ended up being just fine. Um, what else do I have? Now that I've got 80 miles in the shoe, I can confidently say that I really like it. Is it the best of the trail super shoes? I mean, my way too early hot take is as of right now, it is. You know, I think the only shoe that might be able to compete with this is the Hoka Tecton X3 when it comes out uh, later this summer. I think that's August for the Tecton X3. But right now, I think the Speed Ultra might be the top dog in the trail game for the uh, for the fast trail shoes. In terms of durability, uh, I you know I can't. 80 miles not really long enough to talk about durability. I'm definitely going to log a few more miles, but I will say that I have been talking to Terex athlete Eric Lapuma, and he sent me a couple pictures of his first pair of the Speed Ultra that I'm gonna uh, put up here right now. And those shoes have a thousand miles on them over on the east coast of the trails in Vermont. Now, it goes to be said that Eric does have a professional runner's foot strike, but that doesn't take away from the fact that that's actually a thousand miles in the shoe. Very impressive. Adidas has always been known for having very durable shoes. 
and I think this one's going to be no different, but we will talk about that more in the full review that I do with Finn as soon as he gets the shoes. So Adidas, if you're watching this, please send him a pair soon. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the initial impressions. Let's head back to the studio and do a couple listener questions. All right, we're back in the studio. Let's uh, tackle a few listener questions about the uh, Terex Speed Ultra. Does it work as a daily trainer or just a race shoe? So I think because it doesn't have that full carbon plated stiffness, you could totally get away with running comfortably in this shoe uh, most of the week. But I'm not sure I would use it as a daily trainer just because of how special it feels. And I would definitely want to be saving this shoe for like workouts and more important long runs. This actually kind of goes really well into this next question, which is the non-plated version is out in New Zealand and I'm tempted comparison. So I think what they're referring to is the Agravic Speed, not the Speed Ultra. So at is one model right below the Speed Ultra, and that's gonna come out worldwide soon, I think in uh, either end of April, beginning of May, but essentially it is a non-plated version of the Agravic Speed Ultra. It's a little bit lower stack height, but much more tuned for daily training. Um, I think that might be the answer for the daily trainer, and then using the Speed Ultra as the race shoe and the shoe that you're saving for the faster workouts because it's definitely a shoe that feels better as you go faster in it okay next question what's up with the weird inner cuppy midsole um i think that's referring to more of like the bucket seat type midsole and what that's purely there for is i mean it's there for stability the shoe is actually kind of a narrow stance right under the midfoot. I couldn't tell you why Adidas made it so narrow right under the midfoot other than to save weight and maybe because they get to flare out the midsole right underneath your foot and have your foot sit in more of like a bucket seat that allowed them to shave down uh, some millimeters on the sides of the shoe as it gets closer to the ground. So maybe it was just a weight saving tactic but from a stability standpoint it actually feels fine. Next question, uh, a Gravic Speed versus the Ultrafly. So this is definitely gonna be a very hotly contested question. And as of right now, I'm picking the Gravic Speed Ultra over the Ultrafly like 10 times out of 10. That's how much I like the ride of this shoe. I would say that the Ultrafly does feel more responsive. That Zoom X foam just has a little bit more bounce. But for me on the trails, the Light Strike Pro paired with the Extreme Rocker feels more stable, smoother, and I like how it has a little bit more flex. In terms of just like pure bounciness though, I think the Ultrafly feels better. And on like perfectly groomed dirt road, I might still lean towards the Ultrafly, but for actual trail use, I'm going a Gravic Speed Ultra. Oh, this is a good one, this is a good one. When was the last time you saw a rando on the trails actually wearing Tarek shoes? And that's actually a really good point because not too often do you see Tarek shoes in the wild, at least in the States. And one of the big issues with that is um, probably around like 2014, Adidas made a big move to actually pull out of run specialty stores as they wanted to become more of a direct to consumer company. And as a result, not that many running stores like just carry Adidas shoes anymore. And because Adidas has so many shoes across their entire footwear lineup, there's not that many spots that like even Adidas stores that stock the Terex line of shoes, let alone like their specialty trail shoes like this Agravic Speed Ultra. So it's actually really hard to just go into a store and try on an Adidas trail shoe. And then because of that, you have to buy it sight unseen. And that's just a little bit of a risk. So I feel like from a run specialty standpoint, like Adidas has to be like kicking themselves a little bit for making that decision because it's gonna be somewhat tough to get these, these sorts of kind of niche specialty shoes on the feet of people that would actually wanna buy them. So, you know, that's actually a good question. Is this a shoe you'd wear for an entire hundred mile or just part of it? 
like the first 50, 60 miles. You know, I think this is definitely a shoe that you could wear for the entirety of a 100 miler. It would take a bit of training, honestly, to get the feet and the body ready for this feel of shoe for that long. Um, I also felt much more comfortable in the shoe going like 50 mile pace and quicker. I think this is more for most people, like 50K, 50 mile, maybe 100K type race shoe, but I don't, I don't know if this shoe's quite relaxed enough to be racing 100 miles in, so like, I'm not even sure I would at this point. But, you know, after some more time in the shoe, I've only gone on eight runs in them, so maybe after a couple more runs, I'll start to be able to wrap my head around taking this shoe for the entirety of a 100 mile race. Uh, let's do a couple more. Any hope for us hobbit footed folk? That's a tricky one because the forefoot is not that narrow. It's actually got some decent width, um, similar to like the Nike Ultra Fly, but the midfoot is so dang skinny that if your foot retains that width through the midfoot and into the heel, I have a hunch that the shoe is not going to be comfortable, which is going to be a big bummer to some people who are hearing this. Um, so I'm not too hopeful for the hobbit footed folk for the Agravic Speed Ultra. Okay, last question. How does this stack up against other brands' super shoes for the trails? Well, so just kind of off the top of my head, we have like the Hoka Tecton X2. You know, that one's out right now, so we'll compare it to that. The Tecton X2 feels much more like a normal shoe. It's a lot stiffer than the Adidas Terex. Um, perhaps, I think just a little bit lighter, but it doesn't have that magical bounce type feel. The Saucony Endorphin Edge ha is a little bit firmer. It's a little bit lower to the ground. Um, probably a little bit more responsive, but not as cushioned. Again, the, the Adidas feels a little bit more stable on the trails. The, uh, the Endorphin Edge is a little tippy because it's so responsive, it's a little bit wild. The Nike Ultra Fly, kind of the same deal. It's a little bit more responsive. The Adidas is a little bit more mellow feeling, but actually feels smoother on single track than the Ultra Fly, whereas the Ultra Fly just straight up feels faster, but that's not necessarily always a good thing. Those are kind of the big, the big ones that come to mind. If there's any other shoes that you're curious about, just drop it below in the comments and I'll answer. So yeah, final thoughts. I'm really excited to log some more miles in this Terex Speed Ultra. I'm really excited to have a conversation with Finn about the shoe. I wanna see his thoughts and impressions on it as well uh, to see if you know the magic that I feel in this shoe is also there for him. So stay tuned for that. If you don't care about the full review and this was enough for you to wanna to try the, uh, the Gravic Speed Ultra, uh, I'll drop a link below to uh, purchase it at Running Warehouse as I know at least in the US, the Adidas Terex site uh, says that it's not available, but there should still be some sizes left uh, on Running Warehouse. So I'll have a link below. Your purchase helps support this channel, allows us to continue to do reviews like this. Yeah, so stay tuned for the full review video. We'll get that up as soon as we can. For now, let me know if you have any other questions, just drop them in the comments. Um, be sure to like this video, give Conversational Pace a subscribe, and we'll catch it all in the next one.